post graph sample and the water cave exploration. Our project focuses on the localization of an autonomous underwater vehicle, AUV, in an underwater environment, especially for underwater caves. So an AUV is an untested robot to explore underwater world. They are usually more preferable than a diver or a ship because they can collect less obtainable data with low risk or cost. Firstly, we are talking about with the good initialization, how will SLAM perform trajectory estimation for AUVs? Secondly, how can we develop a graph SLAM framework that is initialized with IETF that was run on the same data set by another group? We have used a graph-based SLAM to solve for an autonomous underwater vehicle navigating system in unknown and unstructured environments of underwater cave complex. The vehicle is equipped with two mechanically scanned imaging sonar sensors to simultaneously map the cave's horizontal and vertical surfaces, adopt a velocity log, two inertial measurement units, a depth sensor, and a vertically mounted camera imaging the sea floor for ground truth validation at specific points. With these input parameters, we have formulated the graph slam problem with each node in the graph representing the robot position and the sensory measurements of data. An edge between any two nodes depicts the spatial constraint between the nodes. We have used the GTSAM library to solve our factor graph. In a prior work, an invariant EKF is used to track rotation, position, velocity of the robot in an augmented SE23 framework. We have used these state estimates of this IEKF for the entire robot trajectory to initialize the factor graph in world tree. Each estimation of the robot consists of the robot position and robot velocity in XYZ and the robot orientation as role pitch and yaw. We have initialized the factor graph for the very first node with the prior factors from the state estimations of invariant EKF robot position and velocity. For every subsequent nodes, we have used the sensor measurements of DVL, depth, and IMU to update the factor graph. For constructing the factor graph, it was important to define what the keyframes for the graph would be. As we did not use extraceptive sensors, the definition of adding a new node was time-based, where a new node was added after one second of the robot runtime. As the sensors operated at different frequencies for taking measurements, their measurements were added as factors to the nodes only if the time of the measurement was close to the time at which the node was added. This ensured that, sonar uh, that sensor measurements were representative of the node that they would be constraining. Batch optimization was then performed by the, using the Levenberg Marquat optimizer. In order to use measurements from the sensors, we had to define the measurement model for each sensor and implement them as custom factors in the GTCM framework. For this, we had to define the residual associated with the measurements made from each sensor and the respective Jacobian matrix. The DVL inherently returns measurements in the, body, uh, in the robot's body frame, so conversion to the world frame was, was necessary because the state is being tracked in the world frame. This conversion was done by multiplying the measurement by the estimated rotation, while the depth sensor returns uh, were directly incorporated as the measurements were in the world frame. For the IMU measurements, GTCM's pre-integrated IMU instance was used. As highlighted in their documentation and this paper, this method accumulates the integrated measurements over the augmented special Euclidean matrix group, which aligns with the state representation in our project. The IMU pre-integrator would be reset after each addition of the node to the factor graph in order to ensure that the mark of identity of the factor graph held. We use the following crunches in the dataset provided by Marios to measure our performance. We have the six counts and their offsets from the trajectory. We have their relative positions, as well as the time steps at which the AV approaches them. So we compared our methods to the existing ones, including the invariant EKF, as well as the scan matching slam by Marios. So here's our 3D and marginal plot of our trajectory, so they are, which are similar in shape to the other methods. And our first metric will be the distances between the predicted positions uh, among the two paths. So we have outperformed the other approaches on cone five, and we'll have similar results for the other cones. So for the second measures, we have the distances between successive cones, which we have also results that are on par with the other approaches. In conclusion, our project implemented a SLAM framework to localize EUV in an underwater environment. And the results show the quality of our, our algorithm by comparing to it to previous methods. In future work, we plan to incorporate the incremental software such as SM, and we want to implement the sonar data for locators. And we want to evaluate the algorithm in a more realistic or natural underwater environment. Thank you for your attention.